our procedure for case studies is going to involve three parts. First, you're going to read the case and write your initial response. After you've uploaded your initial response, you're going to discuss the case with your classmates. And then, in the light of that discussion, you're going to write a final response to the case. Your initial response you should think of in terms of how you see the situation, what you think the protagonist in the case ought to do. So here you're really drawing on your own insights, your own moral compass, your own sense of what's important in the case. Uh, the very first thing you need to do in responding to the case is actually give a firm yes or no answer to the question of whether the protagonist in the case should do the thing they're considering doing. Uh, saying, gosh, I don't know, is weaseling out. You have to imagine the protagonist is sitting right across the table from you and they really want your advice. They have this thing they're thinking of doing. They really want to know, is this an acceptable thing to do or not? And you have to tell them. And if you think it's not, if you think there's something better for them to do, you should indicate that instead. But don't say, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe it's okay, maybe it's not. Take a stand. After that, you're going to engage with your classmates and you're going to see what their insights are, how those insights might be different from yours. Hopefully it will give you a broader view of what might be involved in responding reasonably to the case. And it will help you move beyond just your moral compass, your insights, to let's call it a more objective view of what a sensible thing to do in that situation might be. Taking into account other people's values, other people's ways of seeing things. What particularly do you want to be discussing in these cases? Well, if we're following the procedures laid out in the Bebo article, What you're going to be discussing are the interested parties. That is, who's going to be affected for good or for ill by what happens when the protagonist makes a decision and moves forward. Who has something at stake here? Bob Bailey case. It's a good bet Bob Bailey is one of the interested parties. But part of what you're going to reach for in the group discussion is not just the people who are closest to what happens, who are there for the immediate aftermath, for good or for ill, of the decision, but people who might be affected down the line. Uh, and this could include communities. This could include the tribe of science, the larger society. So you should think about that. Think about how the ripples are going to move outward and who might have a legitimate say um, as far as what they'd like to see happen. Another is the possible consequences of the course of action that the protagonist is considering. These consequences could bring good effects, they could bring bad effects, and you want to think through the consequences of doing the thing the protagonist is thinking of doing or of not doing that and doing something else altogether. It's really important to recognize here that you just can't know for sure exactly how things are going to play out. This is just like in real life. Uh, you may have some hunches, but sometimes reality surprises us a little bit. What you can do, though, in thinking through the consequences is kind of identify, here's the worst case scenario. Here's the worst possible thing I can imagine that might happen from the decisions we're looking at. Here's the best possible outcome. And there's a good bet that the actual outcome will be somewhere between those two extremes. 
you're also going to look at the obligations of the protagonist in the case of the person making the decision. Who do they have an obligation to? Well, probably at least to some of those interested parties. What are those obligations? And you might even talk a little bit about where those obligations come from. And finally, you're going to be looking for the ways these obligations that the protagonist has might be pulling them in different directions. Uh, some of them might be pulling in the direction of doing one thing. Some of them might be pulling in the direction of doing something else. Uh, you could almost think of them as vectors acting on the protagonist. And you sort of have to figure out, given those pulls in different directions, what's, which way should the protagonist move? In your final response, you're either going to go with the thing that you were recommending in the first place for the protagonist, but now give maybe a fuller account of who's going to be impacted and how they might be impacted and what kind of obligations are playing a role here. Or you can change your mind and say, originally I thought they should do this, now I'm thinking they should do that, and here's why? Here are the additional interested parties I'm noticing now. Uh, here are the, the additional consequences I hadn't thought of. Here's the serious obligations I'm seeing that I didn't notice the first time through. You should not feel like you have to repeat ground that you've covered in your initial response. If you've listed interested parties in your initial response, you don't have to list them again in the final response. In the final response, you can say, in addition, here are three more interested parties that I noticed only after the discussion. Uh, here are two more consequences that are good and three more that are bad.